I am continuing my reading. What I'm doing in this series is to read through the entire standard works of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This consists of the Bible, the Book of Mormon, the Doctrine and Covenants, and the Pearl of Great Price. I am reading in a chronological order of events, not according to publication or volume, so I will be skipping around a bit as I move along. So we are returning now briefly to the histories in the Bible. This is actually going to finish out 2 Kings, and we will also finish out the book of Jeremiah in this video. Now as we have it, Ezekiel has been prophesying. We had his prophecy of the Latter-day Temple that he gave in the 25th year of the captivity, 25 years after Jeconiah is taken captive and Zedekiah is made king. In the 27th year, he issues his last prophecy that we have recorded. Now, it was at the same time Lehi dies, and Nephi and his people separate from the Lamanites. We get the Lamanite and Nephi separation going on at this time. Daniel is still a magistrate in Babylon. The Jaredites are in their final wars, which we will read a little bit more about in a moment. But now, we pick this up. This will finish out, as I said, this is the end of 2 Kings. 2 Kings, chapter 25, we're going to read verses 27 through 30. And it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the year that he began to reign, did lift up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, out of prison. And he spake kindly to him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon, and changed his prison garments, and he did eat bread continually before him all the days of his life. And his allowance was a continual allowance given him of the king, a daily rate for every day, all the days of his life. Je uh, Jehoiakim, this is the name given to Jeconiah. His, his Hebrew name is Jeconiah. Jehoiakim is his Babylonian name. His father was Jehoiakim, who at the beginning, or in the third year of Jehoiakim's reign, Babylon first invades. And that is eight years before Zedekiah. In the year that Zedekiah becomes king, Jehoiakim died. His son Jeconiah becomes king, is renamed Jehoiakim, and surrenders himself to Babylon when Babylon invades a second time. He is taken into captivity, and Zedekiah is made king. Thirty-seven years later, he is now being brought out of prison. So he spent thirty-seven years imprisoned in Babylon. Now, if you will recall, Jehoiakim was, I think, eighteen years old when he went into prison. Yeah, Jehoiakim was 18, that's what it says here, in chapter 24. Jehoiakim was 18, this is 37 years later, so 37 plus 18, he's 55 years old when he's brought out of prison. He's getting up there in age. And we're not told how much longer he lived, but he lived with the king in the king's house, and he was given honors above all the other princes of Babylon. Now you'll note the king in this story is not Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar is now dead. Nebuchadnezzar reigned for, I think, 43 years. So eight years of that before Jehoiakim went into captivity. 43 minus 8 puts it at 35 years. And it says, Evil Merodach became king. In the year he became king, he brings Jehoiakim out of captivity. So Nebuchadnezzar, I can't remember who's the king between them. Nebuchadnezzar was king. When he dies, his son becomes king. And he's king for two, maybe three years, dies. Evil Merodach becomes king. And Evil Merodach brings Jehoiakim out of prison. Now, we turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter 52, we're going to read verses 31 through 34. This is going to be the same story. Let us see what it says, see if we get any new information. And it came to pass in the seven and thirtieth year of the captivity of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the twelfth month, and the fifth and twentieth day of the month, that evil Merodach, king of Babylon, in the first year of his reign, lifted up the head of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, and brought him forth out of prison. And spake kindly unto him, and set his throne above the throne of the kings that were with him in Babylon. And he changed his prison garments, and he did continually eat bread before him all the days of his life. And for his diet there was a continual diet given him of the king of Babylon, every day a portion until the day of his death, all the days of his life. There's a slight difference in wording there in the last verse. Instead of his allowance, it's his diet, meaning his food. He's... he's He's given basically room and board. He's not being paid money. He's not given a monetary allowance. He's being paid room and board or being provided room and board while he is 
in the king's house. He's being honored in this way. And I don't think it means he's being raised when it says he's raised above all the other kings. He's not being elevated above the magistrates and the rulers of Babylon. He's being honored above all the other kings that were taken captive. Because Israel's not the only land that Babylon conquered, and they're not the only kings that were taken into captivity in Babylon. But here's something here. Yeah, there is a slight discrepancy in the timing of this event. Because in 2 Kings, it says it's in the 7th and 20th day of the month. Still the 12th month of the 37th year, but the 27th day. And in Jeremiah, it says it was the 25th day. So a slight discrepancy in the timing. Nothing important. I'm not really that concerned about it. But it does leave the question of, was Jeremiah the source material for Kings? Or was Kings the source material for Jeremiah? Or did they have a third source that they both drew on? Also note that this is the 37th year here. This is after Nephi and his people have built their temple in the New World. They, have separate, they separated from the Lamanites around the 27th year when Ezekiel gave his last prophecy. And it was in the 30th year that we read that they have already constructed a temple. So this is after the construction of the temple in the New World. I'm going to leave that here. This finishes out the reign of the kings and... We're turning back to the Book of Mormon next, so we will see you there.